Molly, uh, you say that this is a project that you never thought you would do. Yeah, yeah. Well, this whole business is a project I never thought I would do. So the, the book is even, it's like a bonus surprise. Um, when I met my husband uh, and when I married him, he was a trained musician. He was, at the time we got married, in a PhD program for music composition. And as far as I knew, he was going to be a professor of music, maybe. Um, but as it turned out, about three months after we got married, he hatched this sort of crazy and in retrospect maybe not so crazy idea to open a pizza place. Now when he told you he wanted to open a pizza place you initially were a little skeptical because he'd had big ideas before that that never quite came to fruition right? Yeah Brandon is you know Brandon is a, a wonderful dreamer and um, we're sort of a, a good balances for each other I can be like uh, I can lack in spontaneity Brandon has spontaneity in spades. What I didn't understand when he hatched the idea to open the restaurant is that he was committed to it in a very different way. It took a little while for you to realize that, though. You, it, initially, you thought, oh, this will be a passing enthusiasm. Absolutely. It seemed so impossible. I mean, opening a restaurant, tens of thousands of dollars, at least, you need. Uh, not to mention all of these skills that I didn't really know he had. I mean, we were... We had known each other for about two years at that point, maybe two and a half years. And, you know, there's, there's a lot that, that I still had to learn about him. And so I didn't know that he would have a mind for business. I didn't know that he was so passionate about pizza, which he is, that he would, you know, that, that, that his perfectionism would drive him to stick with it and to keep trying to get better and better and better at making pizza. I mean, we're, we're almost five years into this business, and he still comes home sometimes and is like, oh, Tonight I just I couldn't get the the leopard spotting right, which is what the the name of like the char on the underside of a pizza is. So he's I, I underestimated his um, his tenacity, and I underestimated um, yeah the the um, the flexibility of his mind that this person who I met as a musician could also be a wonderful chef and a business person. Now you two are not unacquainted with the restaurant business, and in fact, those connections it sounds like really helped you out a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Brandon had worked in restaurants off and on since he was 15, but most notably when he moved here to Seattle, he got a job as a lunch cook at Boat Street Kitchen, um, and so that that was a huge that was a huge turning point for him because Boat Street Cafe and Kitchen. Um, are, are run by two women who are not professionally trained cooks and who come about it from a really, a really fresh perspective and a really, I would say, humane perspective. They have found a way to, to make the food that they want to make and to um, have the working relationship they want to have with their staff and to have a really nice life while working really hard. And I would say that those are rare things in this industry. This is an industry that, that can take everything out of you if you let it. And so we had wonderful mentors in Susan Kaplan and Renee Erickson, and also in Carla Leonardi, who owns Cafe Lago. She really was the one who, whose vote of confidence, I think, gave Brandon the belief that he could do this. And you kind of had a mission statement kind of based on the kind of the places where your mentors had worked about what you wanted this place to be like. What was it? We, um, you know, we wanted it. Well, it's interesting because that mission statement has evolved. I think at the time we were really taken with the fact that Boat Street, the way that it runs, it really does feel like a big dinner party. You know, I think everybody, all, all of us lay people, I, I still kind of think of myself as a lay person. Maybe that's delusional, but... Um, anyway, I, I feel like I'm still new to the restaurant industry, but pe lay people who aren't in the restaurant industry, we tend to look at it and think, oh, that looks like a big dinner party every night. It looks like so much fun. You gather all your friends around. You cook food. You drink wine. How great. And most of the time, it doesn't look like that. And most of the time, it doesn't feel like that. It feels more like putting on Thanksgiving dinner every night, and it's intense, and it's hard, and it, you know, the work is constant. Um, but Boat Street really felt like a dinner party. It felt like, like, um, like maybe if we could open a restaurant that ran that way, that, that we could have the life we wanted to live and, and also have the business we wanted. And, and we've, we feel really lucky that we've been able to do that. Our, our goal is always to, 
to serve delicious food in a warm atmosphere, a kind of atmosphere that we want to spend time in. Delancey is partly a love story. I mean, it's partly about your relationship in starting this restaurant. Was it assumed from the moment he said he wanted to start a restaurant that you would be part of making that restaurant? No, not not at all. It was really his project. And actually, the idea was launched with our friend Carla from Cafe Lago. Um, and as it went on, um, it became clear that, that Brandon really needed some help. And You know, I had just finished writing my first book and publishing my first book, and I was I was so thrilled to be getting to write for a living. I thought that that was sort of going to be my career, and and it is my career. But the truth is, is this thing called a restaurant came along too, and I wanted to help Brandon succeed, and I saw that he needed my help. So, I um, at a certain point along the way, I slightly kicking and screaming, decided to jump in and help him. It really scared me. I I was very scared of this industry. Well, you did pitch in and worked in the kitchen and created these awesome chocolate chip salted cookies that I think are still on the menu. That was a major accomplishment. But at a certain point, you realized that temperamentally you were not suited to work in a kitchen. Yeah, yeah. So to be a restaurant cook, you you have to be able to withstand a lot of pressure. You know, us, us home cooks, um, as I as I am again now, um, we home cooks. We cook a meal, and sure, maybe there's the pressure of your kids being hungry, or you're hungry and you're grouchy. But it's it's very different to be working in a restaurant kitchen where it's hot, and you're making the same thing over and over again. And there's a dining room full of people who are hungry, and um, being hungry doesn't always make people behave very well, myself included. And there's just a tremendous amount of pressure. And you have to be the kind of person who thrives um, in in adrenaline-filled situations. And part of what I've always loved about cooking is the calming nature of it. I love the rhythm of chopping things. I I love the solitude, really, of cooking. I find it very centering. And restaurant kitchens are the opposite of that. And they're really wonderful sometimes. There were times when I loved it. But most of the time, I just, I really, I cracked under the pressure. So what was it like for your relationship here? The two of you were still fairly newly married. You'd opened this restaurant. You'd pitched in and kind of got the thing rolling. Was it a big deal to say, honey, I I can't work here anymore? You know, um, Brandon could see it as clearly as I could, which was a, a, a good thing, I guess, but also a really tough thing. You know, I, after... After having helped him build this place and working in it for a while, I felt so invested in it. You know, in in many ways, I overestimated my role in it. I felt like, how can I possibly leave? And yet this is making me miserable. Um, But, you know, I had had created a place for myself in it. And then it was as hard to give it up as it was to actually stay here and work in it. So... um, it was, it was really challenging for us. And in the end, I felt like Brandon really helped me get out. Um, Brandon helped me see, you know, we'll figure this out. There are other people we can hire who will be able to do this work. And you need to get out of here. Like, you're not happy. And, and as it happened, over time, we were able to figure out a different role for me in the restaurant, which is, you know, sort of a, a more managerial role. And it allows me to use my skills and Brandon to use his skills. And it's pretty great. One of the things you mentioned you were concerned about going into this was the whole restaurant environment of work hard, play maybe even harder. And now that you're a few years along with Delancey and with the bar we're in now, Essex Next Door, what kind of culture have you created with your staff and with the people you work with? Um, I do feel like these are the people we play with now, which is a wonderful thing. Um, I would have never expected to say this, And at the time that we opened this place, it seemed so naive to me to even hope for it. But these people are really our community now. And um, a number of people on our staff have taken to referring to Delancey as the pizza party. Um, Not because we, you know, have sort of raging parties, but that I think a lot of the time it's really fun for them to come to work. And that, for me as a business owner is an incredible thing. It's so important to me that our staff feels invested and that they love being here. Um, and and I, that's something that Brandon and I are, are committed to always fighting for and always helping to shape and cultivate. 